Okay, uh, this is Dr. Morton. So I, I do want to just uh, take a few minutes and go over um, the uh, the requirements for the uh, for the group project. So uh, so I'm going to make this fairly brief. But the whole idea of the group project is so that you can um, actually um, from scratch do a combinational design. Now this is a combinational design. It's not a sequential design. Uh, I've always thought about adding a group project with a sequential design, and I might might get that done this year. I don't know, but um, so far I haven't been able to get that worked out. But if I can figure that out, I'll do it. But this is a combinational design, which means you have to do a truth table, and then you have to uh, generate K maps from the truth table, and then from that you uh, you may have to do it. You may have to uh, drive your equations uh, using um, min terms so that you can then switch them to NAND gates or you may have to drive your equations in max terms so you can switch them to NOR gates uh, using the double inversion and, and, uh, and the methods to switch them that, that, uh, that we'll definitely be covering um, and I think maybe already have. Uh, so uh, if you need help in your group to get the project done let me know. The first step is to do the truth tables and I want you to to uh, email your truth table I'll, I'll put a date there may be one in the syllabus now but I may change that um, and uh, it'll probably be in about uh, probably be uh, a week from this Friday something like that where your two truth table should be done. Uh, it's always a little trouble getting everybody together so you should work on it early don't wait till the last minute and you can get together on Zoom uh, you can have a free account, and with a free account, you can get 45 minutes, so that's not a problem. I think you can also do some collaboration on uh, in Blackboard, but I haven't ever used that feature, so I don't know. Um, you can also do it on Discord. There's a bunch of places where you can where you can collaborate these days, and most of them are free. Um, and Zoom is free unless you want to have uh, longer than 45 minutes. So get together. Make sure you get everybody together. I have included uh, in the email I sent out. A list so you can see all the people that are in your uh, group and then you can hopefully send them an email if you have trouble getting in touch with somebody let me know but you should be able to look them up and send them an email um, so what I want you to cover and I also put this in the email uh, this is just a little bit different but um, so let me shrink this down uh, well first let me go over the problems so and I think actually and if I put myself over here I think I can blow myself back up. Oh yeah. So, so here's the problem in the textbook. So if you go to chapter eight, this is the, the end, this is page um, what is it uh, 246 or something it says design problems. So, and then it talks about this seven segment indicator. A lot of the design problems do use this, but not all of them. Some of them don't. But uh, so a seven segment indicator. I'm sure you've seen them. If you have an alarm clock with a lighted display, it's usually got big seven segment indicators on it. And anyway, uh, it's divided into uh, seven LEDs. A lot of times there's a decimal point too, and so there's actually eight. But anyway, for this purposes of this course, we're just going to use one with seven. And uh, and you do have, and in some cases you have to display things on a seven segment indicator. In other cases, you just have to display them uh, as four lights. So you may not have the seven segment indicator. Here is problem 8A. All the problems are e either 8A, 8B, and then 8C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, uh, Q, R, S. And the last one is S. And S is, uses a seven segment indicator, but it spins this little disk around. Uh, so. Some of them uh, require you to use five variable K-maps. Some of them require the solution in AND gates. Some require it in NOR gates. Uh, sorry, NAND gates and NOR gates. Those are the two choices. And a few of them specify different configurations for the six and the nine. So make sure you'd use the correct configuration. Almost uh, every problem gives you a maximum number of gates, like this one. Any solution that uses 14 gates and inverters or less, not counting the five inverters for the inputs, is acceptable. The uh, inverters on the inputs, so your, all your inputs, if you have, say, four, in, or four inputs, A, B, C, D, you always have available A, A prime, B, B prime, C, C prime, D, D prime. You don't have to get charged for those gates, those inverters. But all the other gates in your project, you do, you do have to uh, count. And like for this, for 8D, you get 14 uh, 
NOR gates and inverters. And if you have 15, then you'll lose points. And if you do a little better, you might uh, get some bonus points. Um, if you have problems with uh, figuring out the solution, one or two of them are a little tricky, I'm sure. Uh, but if you work on them and try, I think you'll you, most of them you can do easily. The, the two or three that are a little bit harder, you can get almost to the point where you need to be, and then, then you might need a little help. So if you need help, let me know. Um, although groups are usually able to figure it out. And some groups have been able to figure out much, much uh, better solutions than the book required. So that's rather impressive. Okay, um, when you get it all designed, then uh, I do want you to come back and use, uh, use a simulator. Here, I'll pull this up. Um, let's see. So I'll pull it up. This is uh, this is Logisim. It should come up here in a second, hopefully, if I did, didn't screw that up. Yeah. Oh, I see. I clicked on the wrong thing. That was dumb. All right. So here's what Logisim looks like. And I don't know if I have anything I saved. Uh, see if I do. Um, no, I don't think so. So I can't bring anything up. All right. Well, anyway, um, you have all these parts over here available to you. You have uh, pull-up resistors. You have gates. So you can put in uh, NAND gates, and you can put in as many as you want, and you get to specify how many inputs they have over here. Um, you can put in NOR gates or whatever you have. And then uh, they probably also have seven segment indicators. Let's see, uh, I think in the input output. Yeah, so here's a seven segment display. So you can power it, um, and you can hook up to it, and you can actually drive it. I think it's got, uh, I forget, one, two, I don't know. It's got some places where you can input. I don't. I. I'm not exactly sure how you hook that one up. And then you can have power and ground and some other things. Um, and you can have inputs. You can have inputs by having a pin like that, and various other things. So uh, you should be able to set it up and uh, make that work. You just need to. Uh, once you get this all set up, save your file, and then we'll have you run your file, and then you can change the buttons and put in different uh, inputs and, and, and show that it actually works as it's supposed to. And then, um, then uh, so here's kind of what I want you to do. The first step is to derive a truth table, and then the next thing to do is to uh, use K-maps to derive the logic equations. Remember, if you're going for NAND gates, if that's what you have to use, then you want to do it in SOP. You want to do SOP form or min terms. If you have to do NOR gates, then you have to do it in max terms in POS form. And uh, we used to use Logic Aid, but now we now we use Logic Sim because it works much better. Um, Logic Aid came with your book, and it it just so buggy people pulled their hair out. Um, there are some other programs out there you can use if you want, as long as they're equivalent to Logic Sim, that's fine. Um, you like well if you want to use logic aid you can uh, but I don't recommend it and then draw your circuit uh, and you can start off with the and and or form but then then change it then convert it the way uh, the way you'll you'll know how to do once we get to that point I, th I can't remember if we've covered that or not but uh, where you can switch it to NAND and NOR gates by doing the double inversion and using using De Morgan's laws and partially expanding partially expanding that then simulate it uh, with, um, well, Logic Aid will help you solve the things. Use, and then Simuade was the one, these two came with the book, Logic Aid and Simuade. Uh, but like I say, don't use the Simuade for the simulation because it's too buggy. And then, uh, and then you can, uh, uh, then uh, you don't have to do this last step. We probably won't do that. Okay, so. Uh, I'm gonna all right so so that should do it uh, hopefully uh, if you have any trouble finding some sometimes students can't find the problems they're they're the very end of chapter eight uh, so uh, and they're all labeled eight point a 
eight point B and so forth all the way to eight point S. If you're group 19, you have eight point S. If you're group 18, uh, you have eight point R and so forth. If you're group one, you have eight point A. If you're group two, you have eight point B and so forth. Just count your number and figure out. Try and get it right because if you don't, you'll be reproducing somebody else's problem. Um, and I'll probably take off a few points. It's worth 5% of your grade. And then if you want to, at any time during the course, you can, uh, you don't have to do it when you present your project, but you can do a, a hardware implementation uh, using Arduino, using in discrete chips. I, I'll, I'll be happy to get parts to you if you need them. Um, and uh, so you're welcome to do that. You'll get an extra course point, a little extra bounty point if you do that. But uh, it's quite fun if you do it, but you don't have to. All right, I think that's it. I'm going to wrap this up. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, and uh, you can always come to office hours on Monday, uh, or you can text me and, and uh, or uh, email me, and I'll respond to that. All right, with that, we'll quit. Um, hopefully everybody uh, survived the, the freezing week and uh, didn't have too much problems. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you down the road.